one. Well done. That was a great challenge. Can we keep going? have a little look at today it's all about 1v1s but our focus today is on challenging. Using a tactics board can help the players visualize the practice before they take part in it. It also gives us as the coaches the opportunity to write down any objectives or keywords to ensure the session has purpose and the players remain focused. The players at this side are going to pass the ball in to your opponent. Your opponent then will decide are they going to go left or right if they do that, it's worth one point, okay? If they decide that they're going to be really brave and go for the furthest cone away, dribble past, it's worth three points. That's going to include dictating play. Do you know what that means? Dictating play is like almost taking control of the game and telling people what to do and making them mind up what you want to do. Absolutely. So even if you don't have the ball, you can actually control the game because you can force your opponent's left or right. The next one is about delaying our opponent. Yeah. Go on. Um, yeah. Well, Go for it. Yeah, you, so you can absolutely delay what else? Uh, if you're saying that you're one on one with them and they're running at you, you can just hold off them and just keep doing that until your teammates are back and help you. Exactly, perfect, okay, because you want to slow them down, don't you? Um, yeah, really, really good answers there. Deny space in behind. Why do you think that would be important? So stop runners from going in behind, you might just want to cover it off. Like, yeah, yeah. So, say the man's there and you see like the open space behind. I just want to sit off and, and watch the runner. Definitely, absolutely, really, really important as well. And then ultimately, when we challenge, we want to dispossess the opponent. So in other words, we want to get that ball back for our team. Okay, I should also mention, um, so once the ball has been played into the, the opponent, um, if you manage to get win the ball back, okay, you can drive through these cones at the top, okay? Those of you with the ball, okay, you're just going to um, try and aim for this top one, okay? Then you're going to join the opposite queue, and then you have a go at the other row. Ball comes in from this side. Okay. Walking through the practice or asking the players to demonstrate is a good way to check the understanding. It helps the players to build up confidence as well. You get to drive through the gate. Okay. Reset. That's what we're good. There you go. Well done, super. Okay, hold it there. Why do you think it is important as a player who doesn't have possession of the ball, when they win it, why do you think it's important to drive Leaving with the ball? Hand. Yeah. What could we start? Um, great, attack, like, attack. attack, yeah. An attack, a counter attack. Yeah. Questioning and probing can play a powerful role in coaching. When asked effectively, questions can challenge the player, but also clarify information. It also is a good tool to help build up rapport with the players. A whole practice doesn't need to be stopped. Focusing on small groups or individuals will ensure the flow of the session remains. Love it, great skill. Okay. Good hurry, good hurry. That's it. Good. <laughs> Brilliant. Come over then, Harry. You come over this side. So, whenever you're forcing them that way, what were you doing to your body shape? Pushing him like that. Absolutely, and you made that really clear. I love that, okay, because you really got round and you tried to force them that way. Obviously, if you're trying to force them the opposite way, you turn your body like that, yeah? Why do you not think we, we have our body square on? What do you think the problem with this is? Too flat-footed. Too flat-footed, so if he gets past us, we're going to have to turn and go. Yeah, so remember, side on, so that if you need to attack this way or attack that way, you can do it. But that was really, really good. Well done. I want to see how you would delay your opponent. Yeah. OK, so have a little think in your head. Have a go, and then we'll have a quick chat. That's it. Good boy. That's it. Well done. Good. 
So tell me, what, what were you doing uh, there with your opponent? I just getting bending my knees. And, yeah. Um, so if I was like playing kind of defence, uh, I'd, be, I'd be waiting for my team to come back and help me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Definitely, and I really like that you're on your toes. You were side on, like you said, and you were just jockeying him. Yeah, you were almost following his movement, and then it's then you anticipate when to go and challenge for the ball. Brilliant, well done. You've been doing brilliantly. A few of the groups that I've been with, we've been talking about dictating play, okay, and delaying our opponent, okay. And a few key things that came up were side, being side on, okay. Um, so that we're ready, we're low centre of gravity. Bo was talking about bending, the, bending his knees, yeah, and watching that ball so we knew when to go and challenge for it. <coughs> the next round, whenever you're, um, whenever you're playing, I want you to think of some information. When delivering whole group feedback, it is important to reflect and highlight positives from individuals. It also gives us as coaches the opportunity to make any adjustments or add more technical detail reminding the players of the session focus. Brilliant, so as soon as you play that pass in, I want you to analyse, I want you to scan the space, and also, have you heard about triggers? Yeah, yeah. so when you pass the ball in, and when they control it, I want you to watch and see, is that ball under control? If it's a dodgy touch, if it is a dodgy touch, what does that mean you do? You go and challenge immediately. If they get the ball and it's set, and they've got control, delay. what might delay. you do? Delay. Delay. delay, okay, so have another go at that, but think about what foot are they using, okay? Try and analyze and have a look and scan and see what their touch is like as well. Okay, off you go, back into your groups. Well done, that was a great challenge. Can we keep going? Good boy, that's it. Can we drive through the gate? Yes, love that. Super. So there's two different types when we talk about technique of our challenging or tackling that I want us to practice. Okay, the first one is the front foot pinch. If you're the attacker, you're coming towards me, get nice though, can we pinch it? Pinch it that way. The other one, the second one that I want you to have a little practice is, is the back foot block. So you're attacking me, yeah, and I block it with my back foot. Do you think we could try that? Yeah. Perfect, off you go. Okay, so this is going to become... To progress the session, use the step principle to keep the practice fun and engaging. Adding in goals or overloads provides a different challenge for the players, but still allows repetition of the skill with increased decision making. This is more game realistic as players will face these scenarios during match day. That we've been looking at. So if you two stand, if you get yourselves back on that, and off you go. So drive through, drive through. Good. Okay, get yourselves reset again. Okay, so this time, because there's only two of you, they've got the overload. Okay, so communication between yourselves is going to be really, really important. Okay, so let's give it a run and then we'll have a chat. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Ah, finish. Okay, so what did we notice about that attack? It was really what? Really, really quick. Okay, so how can we try and delay our opponent in that situation. Try to make him pause. Exactly. Try make him pause. Yeah. So it's all about your positioning. So um, go out. Try and make him pause. Yeah, and so you're dictating play. Okay, you, you control it. Off you go. Make him Yes! That was a great challenge. Love that. So what sort of challenge was that? What did you do? Uh, front foot? Pinch. Good.